Hi, my name is Liz Smiley, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to help a customer overcome objections. So first we want to know what exactly are customer objections. So simply putting it, an objection is any reason that stops a customer from buying your product or service. So what are some common customer objections? There are four common ones. While there can be many reasons why a person may not want to buy, there are four common. So first would be price or risk. So the price can obviously be an objection for many people because sometimes the price is a risk for that person because they may not be able to afford it or it may not be in the budget. So price can always be an objection for a customer. Quality of service. This can be an objection because the customer may be unaware of what to expect of the services of your company or what quality you bring to the product or service. Third is the trust or relationship. If you haven't built that foundation with the customer, they may not trust you. So this is actually a great opportunity for you as a salesperson to create that bond and relationship to hopefully have a customer that lasts a long time. And lastly, they may just be stalling. They may be unsure of if they really want the product or not. And so their objections may be just to stall. So how do you want to handle these objections? So first, you want to anticipate any objections that you might have with your service or product. And then you want to prepare for those objections. So you want to look also add objections as valuable information of concern. You don't want to dismiss their objection, but you want to take that and say, okay, they have these concerns. What can I do to address, address that? Next, you want to always address their concern, but you want to always focus back on why they need the product or service in the first place. So you want to put the main focus on that while addressing their objections as well. You also want to reiterate any benefits and provide more evidence so that they understand um, why they need this product and give them any missing information or anything they might need to help them understand the bigger picture of why they need this product. And you're always, of course, going to ask any questions because asking questions is just going to help you even more get to the root of why they're objecting. So there are six steps that can help you get through helping the customer overcome objections. So when a customer first objects, you actually want to thank them for objecting and because that way they're giving you the reason why. Because if they just flat out say no, you won't know why they are not going to purchase the product. So if they're giving you a reason, that's actually something to be thankful for because you can address it. Next, you want to empathize with the customer. You want to understand. I think we could all understand if someone says, it's a bit out of my price range. You can empathize with that person and connect with them because you've been there before, I'm sure. Next is a very important step, is discovery. You want to really open conversation with the customer here. This is where you can find out a lot of information. So you want to ask a lot of open-ended questions. So you can find out exactly what's really going on. What is the root of the problem? Why are they not buying the product or service? If you're getting yes or no answers, then you really need to rephrase the questions because you want to open the dialogue. By opening the dialogue, getting more information, having them talk more, you're also going to be building rapport with the customer. So the next step would be ask, probe, and confirm. So here, if you're not understanding something, you're not getting to the root of the objection, you want to make sure that you're clarifying what they say. You can reiterate back what they say and make sure that you're really getting to the root of the problem. So restate what you're hearing in your own words so that you confirm that you're really understanding why they're objecting. Next, you want to show them the value. You want to show them how, how this is going to be important for them in the long term, what they're getting from it, because you want to show them the value in the product or service. If they don't find value in it, they're not going to be a customer for the long haul. And lastly, you want to back it up. You want to show proof. You can show proof through customer references, customer success stories, any research that you have about the product, but you want to give them concrete evidence, even if it is customer experience, on why that this works. 
So those six steps are great to go through, but while you're doing that, you can also use some of these other useful tips while you're speaking with the customer and really building a relationship with them. So first, it's so important to listen. You want to make sure that they feel heard. So if they don't feel like what they're saying is really getting to you, you're going to lose a lot of rapport with that customer. The next um, would be a feel, felt, found method. That would be just by simply saying, I understand how you feel. And then you could bring up a previous client that we've been there before. We felt had other customers feel this way before as well. And this is how we found the solution. This is how our product helped them come to that resolution through that objective. You always want to start conversation. You never want there to be a lack of communication. You just need to be talking, getting things going. The more that you find out about them and you build a connection with that customer, the more you're going to help solve these objectives. You also never want to minimize the objection. It, they're addressing this concern for a reason and you never want to get it to become combative or minimize how they're feeling. Really address it and don't overlook it. And you also want to determine their outcome. In the beginning, you can do this and say, so what is the end goal with getting this product? Because if you can find the end goal, you can look for any hurdles along the way, which would maybe be why, one of, where one of their objectives is coming from. And lastly, you always want to be honest. It doesn't matter if you sell them and then when they get home, if they find something else out, you're never going to build that trust and credibility with a customer and you're not going to have a lifelong customer in them. So you always want to be honest. No product or service is going to be 100% right for everyone so or 100% what they're looking for. So you just want to make sure you always let them know. And if you're up front, they're going to trust you. So in conclusion... You can, customers are always going to have objections, but you don't want to look at them as a bad thing. It's going to happen. So, but to get through that, you want to anticipate any objections that they have. You never want to neglect or be fearful of the objections. You want to address them head on and let them know how you can work through them. And by doing that, you always have to be prepared and know so that any customer that walks through the door, you're going to know how to handle that objection. All right, and here are the references, and I hope you learned a little something today about how to handle objections from the customer.